I'm Steve for This Week with Cars, and this week we have a long-awaited video on my 1971 Jaguar XJ6. If you remember in my last video, which I'll post a link to below, I ran this Jaguar on my dyno and it did not have the best of results. Power seemed to be just fine until we got to high RPM and then it just dropped off and the car wouldn't accelerate any further. For just driving around on the streets, I think it's making about the power that it should, but it's definitely low on power for accelerating onto on-ramps onto the interstate. One day after mistakenly filling my right-hand fuel tank, which drips directly onto the ground, I decided to investigate the fuel tank and see what the problem was. It ended up being that the fuel tank was completely full of rust. There's a divider halfway down the fuel tank and that had rusted completely away filling the bottom of the tank with rust. One thing I learned while trying to get the fuel tank out was the filler neck was completely stuck to the fuel tank. And these are not available, so I had no choice but to work extra hard in getting this off, because if I damaged this, it would be very hard to replace. All it took was a big punch and hitting the fuel tank in the correct spot to knock it loose. So if you're planning on tackling the same job, make sure that you don't damage your fuel cap. To get the fuel tank out of the XJ6, the fuel tank is hidden inside the fender here. So the bumper needs to come off because this lower section right here that hides the fuel tank is covered up behind the bumper. So you'll have to take your rear bumper off and then get take off all the bolts to take this panel off and your fuel tank will be hiding in here. In my case, I also took the exhaust off on this side to get better access to things. Although I'm not sure that that's always needed. Here's my new fuel tank and this is what it looks like. Normally I would order parts like this from XK's Unlimited, but they were bought out by Moss Motors. So Moss Motors is where I got all the parts to fix this. Along with a fuel tank, I also got a new fuel sender unit. I can't believe that the float was still intact on the original fuel sender with how bad it looked inside the tank. And I also got a new sediment bowl fuel filter, which sits in the trunk of these cars. Here in the trunk floor of the XJ6, over here is where that sediment bowl normally sits. Here's the new one next to the old one. Now the main difference between these is that the old one has a fuel shutoff valve on the top of it. The reason I've elected to get a new one is these tend to get stuck and they also leak. So taking the glass bowl off of one of these that's been sitting for a long time can be very difficult and it might leak afterwards. So I'm just going to put a new one on. So I need to install the fuel sender, which goes in this hole over here, and it's going to be mounted down there. That's about empty. And then when you fill the tank up, the float rises, and that's full tank right there. It'll probably actually be hitting the top of the tank because it can actually go up high enough that it'll be hitting the top there. And then that's considered an empty tank right there. So it looks like we do have a slight amount of reserve fuel here at the bottom after it says empty but it's only about maybe a quarter gallon. The correct order of installation here would be the rubber gasket and then the sender. Of course, make sure that you're installing that the correct way. There are a couple tabs. It does clock in only one way, but it will be a whole lot easier to find the tabs if you have it installed correctly from the beginning. And then you insert the locking ring. And these always point to the outside because that's what you're going to hit to lock it in there. Just a second ago, you saw me in a short sleeve shirt and right now I'm in a sweatshirt. That's because that was actually September of last year and now it's almost the end of March. And that's because I ran into major issues with the fuel tank. The fittings are not the same between the tanks. And it took me a long time to solve this. I did contact uh, John's Cars. They're a Jaguar specialist. I was reading on the forums that they should know exactly what I want. I told them at John's Cars exactly what tank I had and exactly what car I had. They said, oh, we know exactly what you need. I did order two of the plugs because I plan on doing the other tank eventually. So I ordered two of them. And then as you see, it says move hex plug from old tank to new. I took my old hex adapter off of the old tank and it, it doesn't come anywhere close to fitting into either of these ports. Also, this is the plug that 
John's cars build me, what is it, $40 a piece for. Also useless with this tank. Yeah, this plug does fit into this hole right here, but that would be plugging the hole that I need to draw my fuel from. It did, however, give me a clue to solving this. You see the part number is CAC2439 Special. And if you look up CAC2439, it actually comes up with this part right here. It's a little tiny pipe that was used on the later XJ6s. And this pipe should solve my problem. I can install this, then I can put a hose here that runs to my pump. The main problem is these are not made anymore. Nobody has one, and it took me a long time to track one down. I talked to Moss Motors where I got the tank. I talked to Welsh and other distributors in the UK. Nobody could give me anything that adapts to these tanks. I never did figure out what the thread on this plug right here is. What I did is I took some fuel safe sealant, and then I cross-threaded this plug in there. This port here was the fuel return on later Jaguars, and it returns the fuel at the very top of the tank. So behind this fitting is a pipe, and that runs up to the top. So I don't really have to worry about fuel getting into here. It's crazy that all of the suppliers are selling this exact same tank. Nobody has the fittings that go into either of the ports, and none of the suppliers can give me any information about the tanks. Everything's back together. Let's fill it up with fuel. See if it drives any different. I did add a little bit to the tank before I left and the car is driving on it. The fuel gauge is reading more than empty right now. I hope that goes up once I put fuel in it. I am using no ethanol gas, of course. It's a shame that those in the UK don't have this lock so that you can do hands-free filling of your car. 9.2 gallons is what it took. Nothing's leaking onto the ground, so that's good. All the instruments are coming up except for the fuel gauge. So I'll have to investigate that at a later date. This car has always been fine for driving around on the street. Let's see if it is still sluggish while pulling onto the highway. Right now I have my foot to the floor. I think it should be accelerating a lot faster than this. So I'm going to say that there doesn't seem to be any change in the car at all. But at least now I know I'm getting good fuel to the engine. That's it for today. If anybody knows the correct fittings to fit an early Series 1 XJ6 adapted to the new fuel tanks that they sell for these cars, please post below and I will include it in the description to help everybody else who's trying to do this with their car. Now that the fuel tank is back in the car and the car is running again, I can continue on with the upgrades that I had planned for this car. So if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.